والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين الإخوة الكرام الأخوات الكريمات السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته جاء في كلمة لمولانا الإمام الصادق عليه السلام أنه قال ورع أنفع من تجنب محارم الله والكف عن أذى المؤمنين واغتيابهم ولا عيش أهنأ من حسن الخلق ولا مال أنفع من القناعة باليسير المجزي الإمام جعفر الصادق عليه السلام in this beautiful حديث says لا ورع أنفع من تجنب محارم الله والكف عن أذى المؤمنين واغتيابهم There is no piety There is no righteousness Better than staying away from committing and violating God's orders There is no righteousness There is no piety better than staying away from harming other people and backbiting them. Some people come and ask the imams, the local imams, the mashayikh, the siyad, what is the most mustahab thing I need to do? Rajab is coming. The month of Rajab is coming, right? It is mustahab that we fast every day in Rajab. Before Rajab, it is mustahab that we fast every Thursday and every Monday. That's mustahab. And some people are particular about searching for anything mustahab recommended to do. But yet, when they attend a sahra, they are sitting with the friends, they don't mind backbiting. They don't mind blasting other people. Now, nowadays, you don't need to attend the Sahra to backbite. You don't need to attend a Sahra to blast. You have your account on Facebook. You can bless anyone you want on, on, on Facebook. You can backbite anyone on Facebook and have people read what you wrote. By the way, my dear brothers and sisters, this Facebook is very dangerous. Sometime someone comes home upset over something silly. Or trivial and instead of containing his or her anger they go to Facebook and they reveal their emotions by making a statement that will stick there forever five minutes later ten minutes later he may regret what he said but the post is all, all already there many people shared that post Watch what you write. The word utters from your mouth is your prisoner before coming out of your mouth. The minute it comes out of your mouth, you are its prisoners. You become its prisoner. What you write on Facebook before writing it, it is your choice to write or not to write. Once you write, you put something out, you become a hostage of what you wrote. Be careful what you put there. I go back to the subject. My subject was not Facebook. My subject was how do we perceive piety and righteousness? Some people believe righteousness, piety could be achieved 
by fasting the whole month of Rajab, by having this in Misbahama in my hand and saying, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, that's all fine. But according to the Imam Ja'far al Sadiq, what is more effective than all those acts is to refrain from harming others, from backbiting, from committing sinning. I remember I was visiting the shrine of Imam al Ridha alayhi salam a few years ago. There was a very interesting sign posted at the entrance of Imam al Ridha alayhi salam speaking to sisters whose hijab is very loose. The sign says, Sister, Visiting Al Imam al Ridha is mustahab, recommended, but wearing hijab is mandatory. Some sisters do not wear hijab, but they visit Al Imam al Ridha. Some sisters do not wear hijab, but they fast on Mondays and Thursdays. And instead of fasting mustahab on Monday and Thursday, go ahead and fix your hijab. Some people fast. Mondays and Thursdays of every week, but they don't bash or shy away from backbiting. And instead of fasting Mondays and Thursday, I need to teach myself to refrain from backbiting. I need to teach myself to refrain from harming and hurting other people's feelings. What does what good it does to me? If I fast not only Mondays and Thursdays, if I fast every single day of the week, yet I don't mind backbiting. I don't mind hurting people's feelings. I don't mind mocking this guy and that guy. I don't mind blasting other people on Facebook and on the social media. What good it does to me? It does no good. If I can teach myself how to use my brakes. Some people, you see some cars have a very loose brake. They have to go to the mechanic and change their brake once in a while. I mean their cars brake. I had to take my car recently to change the brakes because the brakes were so loose. Some people's brakes are so loose. They cannot take a break when it comes to other people's dignity. They just go loose. They say whatever comes to their mind. They utter any word that they think of, thinking that it's okay. My dear brothers and sisters, some of the words we use, trust me, can have the effect of a nuclear bomb. Nuclear bomb. If I say something and then I cause a fitna in a community, this is not less dangerous than detonating a nuclear bomb. When I say something and some innocent people can be hurt due to my words, this is worse than detonating a bomb. But sometimes we don't see it. We don't see how damaging our actions, our words. They say words matter. They say in this country words matter. Yes, words matter. Because it could be one word you say, and it can cause a big, big fitna. Why many people do not use certain words, the N-word? Because if you use it, you may cause fitna. You may cause trouble. You may rile up a whole community. It's only one word. But yet, your one word, no matter how small, can have a big impact. Watch 
what you say. Watch what you write on Facebook. Again, again, I would like to go to that Facebook. It has become a habit, addiction to some people. They have nothing to do during the day. All he does, he goes to his Facebook account and he relates what he has done today. So he ate kubba b'siniya. He has to put it there. And then he drank Pepsi, so he has to mention it. And then he had to go to Tim Horton, so he has to mention that he went to Tim Horton. What is this? You think people have nothing to do other than reading my nonsensical news? What did I eat? What did I drink? Where did I go? Do I think I'm the center of this world? That people have no other concern in this world just to read my post and what I've ha have I done throughout the day? I have to be very foolish to think that way. Let's not waste time on things that will not achieve any result. Whether I tell people I drink, I, I ate hummus or not, what does that do for me? How much impact it can have, positive impact it can have. Be purposeful in life. You think you're here on earth for no reason? We have a homework to do. Let's not waste our time on writing or posting things that are completely irrelevant. That can come afterward and haunt me. ولا عيش أهنا من حسن الخلق. الإمام الصادق has a beautiful recipe for having a joyful life. He says, well, you want to enjoy your life? Have حسن الأخلاق. Have a good temper. Because if you have a bad temper, you will not enjoy anything in this life. Even if you live in the most beautiful mansion, even if you drive the most luxurious car, you will not enjoy anything. Not because the problem is in the car or in the mansion. It is in me, in my akhlaq. Lower your expectations. Some people have so much high expectations. I expect when I go, to Lebanon, now everybody has to invite me over for their, over for dinner or lunch. Well, some people are busy. Some people cannot afford inviting you. Let's not have that much high expectations from other people. If you lower your expectations in life, and if you change your temper, you will enjoy your life. Otherwise, you will keep suffering if you have high expectations. This guy looked at me, he didn't say salam. That guy looked at me, he ignored me. This is called high and unreasonable expectations. Don't. If someone looked at you and he didn't say salam, say to yourself, maybe he didn't see me. Maybe he was preoccupied with someone. Maybe he had something in his mind kept him so preoccupied. Maybe he has lost a loved one. Maybe he was beaten by his wife. Maybe she was beaten by her husband. Let's give people the benefit of the doubt. Don't always assume people have bad intentions toward you. Sometimes we have, we immediately assume other people had bad intentions. Look at him. He saw me, but he didn't say salam. He invited everybody for his son's wedding, but he didn't invite me. Maybe he forgot. Maybe he forgot. Why you always assume that others have bad intention toward you? 
lower your expectations and have a mild manner temper don't expect people to act like slaves for you people are not your slaves if someone does me a good then that is i out of their kindness people owe me nothing i should not think that people owe me oh i did this guy a favor 15 years ago he forgot what i did for him why you keep rebuking keep chiding other people take it easy be cool get over this get over this don't look at yourself as you are the center of this world some people come to me and they say say it we feel someone has written something black black magic for us i say no that's not true why say it you don't believe in sihr i say even if i believe in sihr i don't believe you're that important that people have nothing to do but to write you black magic who you think you are who you think you are people have nothing to do other than sitting and doing black magic for you don't find faults in people find it in yourself if you do not get along with your spouse don't look for someone outside your family people are having black magic for us حاطين عينهم علينا لك مين انت اللي يحطوا عينهم عليك شو انت شو انت شو تحاسب نفسك انت مين يعني who i think i am that people have no other business as other than sitting and waiting to make my life crumble if my life crumble i have to look within myself i have to look at my own actions i have to look at my own attitude sometimes my attitude is arrogant and i am not willing to recognize that or acknowledge that i blame it on sihr on ain on a black magic wake up be realistic wala aisha ahna min husn al khulq always have akhlaq hasan mild temper someone apologizes to you say fine thank you there are people who never accept apology i made a mistake i came i apologized no way no you insulted me publicly you need to go and apologize publicly what is this what is this this is arrogant some people make a mistake no you have to correct your mistake so what do i do do i hang myself some people stop short of saying go and hang yourself in order to correct your mistake take it easy one of the characteristics of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi sallu alayhi bi a'la aswatikum كان لا يلوم احدا وانما يقول قال قولا when someone makes a mistake he would not come and to him see you did this didn't i tell you you will do this mistake so someone made a mistake let go of it let go of it don't make a big deal don't make a big deal someone said negative about you make yourself as if you have not heard it man akhlaq al aqil at taghaful people reasonable people sometimes they do taghaful do you know what taghaful is taghaful is i hear you saying something but i pretend as if i have, as, I have as if i have not heard you saying it punish as they say punish if you go home and 
your wife is nagging and making a big, or your husband is nagging or make a big deal, take it easy. You have two ears, let it from one ear in one ear and let it out from the other ear. That was our teacher used to tell us when we were kids. Sometimes you have to act as if you have not heard what was said to you. Do not react after every word you hear. You hear. Do not act after every small criticism you hear. Sometimes pretend that you didn't hear. وَلَقَدْ أَمُرُّ عَلَى اللَّئِيمِ يَسُبُّنِي فَمَضَيْتُ ثَمَّ تَقُلْتُ لَا يَعْنِينِ Al Imam Zain al Abidin says, I was passing by a man who was insulting me, swearing at me. I continued going and I said he didn't mean me. I pretended as if he was not talking to me. That's how I need to act sometimes. Let go of things. I know you meant me. I know you were talking about me. It's okay. I let go of things. Some people know. Anta? Anta altai? Was that to me? Khrab. Baddaynaz habbat al sama ala al ard. Honestly, some people want to declare war of, on someone who said something could be offensive. Move on. Move on when you hear something very offensive. And the third word, وَلَا مَا لَأَنْفَعْ وَلَا مَا لَأَنْفَعْ مِنَ الْقَنَاعَةِ بِالْيَسِيرِ الْمُجْزِي He says the best money is قَنَاعَةِ to be content. If you're not content, no money can satisfy you. Trust me. If you own, if you possess one million, you will say, I need another million. If you possess two million, you will say, I need four million. If you possess four million, you will say, you know what? The same guy who started his business with me the same year, now he has 10 million. I only have four million. The best way to stop this greed in me is qana'a. To be content with what God has given me. To say, Alhamdulillah, I have enough food to eat when I go home. I have enough food for myself and for my wife and my kids. Alhamdulillah, I do have a vehicle that takes me home. And it does not break out in the middle of the way. At least it takes me home. But if I keep looking for something luxury, what is luxury? What is luxury? He buys a $120,000 car, then someone tells him, what is this? You know that doctor? He has a car worth $250,000. You know that businessman? He owns Rose Rice. It's worth $500,000. The best thing I can teach myself is qana'a. And qana'a is not by looking outside. Who has what? Whatever I have should be enough for me. Look at other people. Look at other nations. Travel and go and see how billions of people live around the world. Many of them live on poverty. On 70 cents a day. 70 cents a day. And yet they are happy. They are satisfied. If I see those things, I will be, I will have qana'a. I will say, Alhamdulillah, Allah has given me so much compared to other people. But if I don't have qana'a, nothing will quench my thirst, my greed. Al Imam al Sadiq says, Hubbu al dunya wal mal, kashari bi ma al bahr. ما ازداد شربا الا وازداد عطش. He says if you don't have قناعة, 
you will be as if you're drinking the salty water of the ocean. If I'm thirsty and I drink ocean water, the more I drink, the more thirsty I will be. But when I have qana'a, a little bit will be enough. A little bit for me will be sufficient. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يوفقنا لما يحب ويرضى وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله الطيبين